<clears throat> Hello, how's everybody doing? Welcome, Classicast is back, finally, after so long. It's been, I guess we did our last episode, this is Classicast number 33. Our last episode was uh, right before Classic launch, and we, uh, we weren't planning on taking so long of a break, but we were playing the game so much, and uh, <laughs> just kind of with all our schedules and how everything goes... Um, we haven't really been, we, we haven't really had a chance to get back to Classic Cast, so we're glad to be back. We're excited. I'm here with Tips Out Baby. I'm here with Stay Safe TV, um, and we're going to have a really good show today. We're going to talk about BWL We've been busy. Stuff. We've been busy playing the game. Mm -hmm. Classic's been out for how long? Five months? Five and a half, five and a half months? How long? Almost uh, six months. Yeah, really long, because it came out August 27th, uh, so yeah, we've been looking at, yeah, almost six months. Almost six months. So yeah, it's been it's been a really long time, but we're excited to finally get back to Classic Cast. And it's actually so funny because there's probably so many people who've started watching our streams and started watching what we do and have probably no idea what Classic Cast is because it's <laughs> just because of how long it's been. And now that we've actually had the game, we've all been playing the game uh, instead of doing Classic Cast and doing other forms of classic content before uh, before the game could come out. But we're back. We're here and. Um, like I said, we, we have a lot to talk about today. The first thing we want to talk about is uh, actually getting, kind of going over what, what's happened since since Classic launch. Uh, I think we've all, uh, everybody's had a different journey, right? As far as Classic launching, uh, or sorry, the Classic launch experience, what's happened since then. People are in different guilds. People are doing different things. Um, some people are leading guilds. Some people are raiding. Some people are playing casually. Uh, even between well, let me us ask three, we're all this. doing different stuff. Go ahead. What What's your favorite part of classic so far what's the most fun thing you've done in classic so far probably the, the most fun thing i've done um nothing it's terrible <laughs> yeah nothing sucks <laughs> yeah I, I think like as far as like the most fun thing uh for me personally i i, I enjoy guild leading and, and guild leading has like its own stresses Right. Like sometimes, you know, you have to deal with like random bull crap that it's just like, okay, dude, I don't want to have anything to do with this. Right. But, um, there's a lot of reward that comes out of guild leading, right? Like you feel like for me anyway, like I feel like a lot of like, um, fulfillment out of guild leading, raid leading, doing this kind of stuff and, and, and seeing people get to enjoy the game kind of under the, the, the unified vision of, of our guild. So I, I, I like that a lot, but what about you guys? Um, Go ahead, stay safe if you want to go. I think the first like ten days, that yeah. was the, and that's that's the the fabled fresh experience, right? Classic fresh. Mm -hmm. It was the most fun. You can level. I mean, now like I've said this a lot. My my favorite thing to do in classic is level and get, level through Strangled Thorn and do all these quests. Now, I mean, this is this is a streamer problem. I get it, but it's it's hard to have that sort of class authentic classic experience these days whereas for the first 10 days before there were 60s running around everyone was doing their own thing i could kind of have that back in the day now it's it's super hard to do that so that was yeah. for me the most fun it's funny you say that because like the first 10 days for me were the worst <laughs> like by far by the end of it i'm pretty sure everybody in our leveling group just wanted to strangle each other <laughs> And I think a big part of that was like the whole dungeon meta and just like spamming dungeons over and over again. But um, I think it was like right after that for me where I, I like made the conscious decision where I was like, okay, I'm going to take some time off streaming, just relax a little bit and just try to enjoy the game off stream. And I think that's when I started to enjoy it a lot more. And um, it's been fun. I mean, I, there's a lot that's happened. Like you said, S-Fan, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the guild that I came in is is no longer with us. Rest in peace, bunch of idiots. Yeah. Rest in peace, Nick Polum. <laughs> uh, but but it's been fun, and I think there's a lot of really cool stuff coming on the way. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think it's been good. Um, well, what's coming? What are we here to talk about today? So, the big thing is uh, BWL. So, that's that's one thing that's really exciting. And um, you kind of touched on this already, but you, you, you talked about how, for you, stay safe, your... Uh, the, the big thing that you enjoy doing in Classic is leveling, and, and that's why the beginning was so fun. For me, I, I like end game content. I like, I, like, I like playing at level 60, and I like PvPing, and doing all that kind of stuff. I like raiding. Um, we're in this point where the domino effect is about to start, where you have the big, you have the first six months where 
level do MC the rank started for people who are ranking uh, people who are interested in ranking that kind of stuff battlegrounds came out all that so that, that's what that's good for is like you can casually play you can PvP or you can rank whatever um, now when BWL comes out it starts this domino effect of uh, Basically, it's not really domino, but I guess chain reaction is a better word, of a bunch of content coming out that works really well together, and it gets really fun. Uh, BWL hits this Wednesday, I believe, uh, at, I believe at 3 o'clock central time, 5 p.m. PST, I think is I think is when it's, whenever it's going to drop. Um, mm -hmm. But BWL is going to hit probably a month after that, or, or next sometime next month, we're probably going to see a Rathy Basin, and I think probably sometime in the month after that, we'll see ZG. So one more battleground is going to get at, added. Uh, Zulgarub is the gonna best come battleground. I'll add. See, I, I like Warsong by far. I so here we're totally different. Then I actually really dislike. Really? It's not that I can. T I dislike it. I don't like Warsong. I don't like All Truck Valley after spending several weeks in All Truck Valley and Warsong. I just All Truck Valley was one of those like okay maybe maybe I'll like it. You know maybe I'll be okay because I never played Northdale, which is when the All Truck Valley ranking meta sort of sprouted up yeah um it's like okay maybe it'll be fine no i, I hated it it made me yeah. stop ranking that's one of the reasons why i stopped yeah ranking. av av was a um, was a nightmare <laughs> and i just don't like world song but arathi basin man that is a that is a good battleground i think arathi is the best to pug it's super fun to pug and just do it like solo queue but i think war song is really really fun if you have a really fun pre-made because like at the very least like you've got the comms going, you've got like the some sort of like competitive feel, which is pretty rare in classic, um, and that's like kind of you know titillating. Yeah, T uh, titillating. Yeah. yeah. So I'm actually the exact opposite. Tips. I, I like uh, uh, I like War Song as a pug more, and AB as a pre main more. The reason why I don't like AB as a pug so much is because when you join an AB, I feel like what happens a lot of times, and and this is a human problem is people will take the path of least resistance, right? Mm -hmm. So people run in there, they go, they rush blacksmith on both sides. Some people will kind of filter out and go somewhere else and try and like cap a flag. What happens? Two, three, three, two, one side or the other. And then what? Uh, people are just kind of like, okay, well, that's it. And they just AFK at stables. <laughs> it's like, I, <laughs> I, 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 that's, it's, it's super, super annoying. But uh, I've been in way too many games where I'm just sitting there. I'm like, dude, like somebody do something. So uh, AB is going to be fun, but uh, I, I enjoy it as a pre-made a lot more than I enjoy it as a pug because I feel like people just give up quickly and they're like, well, I could just say well, you're not we doing have anything. to pre-made it together and tips you have to. Do you have a 60 on Alliance on Ferlina yet? I, I have is, that, is that a plan? I have an Alliance on Ferlina. I also have an Alliance on Grobulus that's further along. I've got an Alliance on Gehenos as well. So actually the only server that I play Horde on is Ferlina on my main account, but... I don't know if you guys can convert me. If you guys can flip me, we'll see. You know, maybe by the end of this podcast, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, I think like you know, we we've had uh, on our server, we've had uh, like a little bit of like faction difference, population imbalance type of stuff. Uh, I, I think it's leveled out a little bit. It was pretty bad at the beginning of phase two. Um, now this is something that we talked about, and this is something well, that you know, you know what's going to make the faction imbalance real quick super super apparent is day one blackwing layer when you're trying to click on the orb to get in assume i'm assuming everyone's already tuned <laughs> if you're not you should go to upper blacker expire get a tune yeah. do the quest but mm -hmm. day one blackwing layer <laughs> I, th I think probably there's going to be 600 horde camping the the ubers area up there and well, it's going to be super hard for lines to get well, in well you know what's funny is uh i don't know if this is true or not but people might plan to like camp it or whatever but I think you can click the orb while you're dead. I don't know if that's... You can't. Okay, the first time you click it, there is a text dialog box. You have to say, like, you put your hands up to the orb. Only yeah. the first time, I believe. So, and I don't think you can click it the first time when you're dead. Yeah, that's maybe, maybe. I don't know. Well, there could be a text dialog that pops up because there's the, there's the ghost dwarf and BRM on the, on the coffin in the middle. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe you can do that too. But uh, either way, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be pretty interesting to see. It's gonna be interesting to see how that pans out because I I don't think it's gonna be that bad. Like I mean, the people like are gonna try and camp it on both sides or whatever, but it might not be that big of a deal because people can either just spawn and use a macro to just like click it and go through with a macro, 
and and get through the text like super fast, or they can, uh, or they can actually clear UBRS and run through, and they can go like t- like four ten man groups and go through UBRS and just run in and make their group right before they enter. There's a one minute window where you could do it, I guess. Yeah, that's that's mm. probably the safest bet. Yeah. So one or, one or the other. But but I mean, ultimately, if if you're it's not trying to go to into Blackwing layer with with world buffs, like the reason to have this conversation is. Do you want to bring world buffs in? So if if you mm-hmm. don't care about dying a couple times using world buffs, it doesn't matter at all. It doesn't doesn't dumb conversation to have, right? Yeah, yeah, that's I, true. I like that though. I like that people won't be able to do a black wing layer with world buffs. I, ideally, hopefully, even well, on Horde side, do, I hope I hope there's enough warfare where nobody gets in with world buffs I, in I, an ideal world. And here, here's another thing. I uh, this is this is how we did this in the past, and and how I feel about this. Uh, if you if you want to go in with world buffs. I think that's fine, mm-hmm. but I, I don't want to like ask people to go get world buffs and stuff like that, um, because it, in in early progression, because like we might wipe on a boss or something because of something stupid early on. Like, don't worry about it, right? Like, I, I'll even go and I, I think how I'm going to do this whenever we lead our raids is now my guild. Like, we're not trying to speed run, we're not trying to push for server first or anything like that, um, but we want to do the content and we want it to be a fun, good environment. So what we're probably going to do is we're probably going to go first attempt. You can pop consumes and stuff if you want. But depending on if, if we wipe or whatever, depending on how bad the wipe is, then uh, I'm going to say don't pop consumes until the next boss, probably. Unless it's really close, right? And they're like, okay, pop consumes. And, you know, we have a few attempts in. Like, you got to play it by ear. I just don't like, I don't like making people feel like they're having to spend a ton of gold. And... Uh, put in a lot of like time investment for something that is like, okay, we're trying to figure this out. Uh, the difference is if you're, uh, I guess, PTRing or something, but that's a whole different conversation. You know, that's kind of what PTR was before in private server. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, one one important, like, this is like a guild leadership thing. You need to make sure that everyone across your 40 man rate is sort of investing the same effort, right? Because if you have a couple, maybe 15 people that are showing up with world buffs and they're flasking, and then you have, the other 25 people that aren't doing those things and you wipe on a boss, you're going to have 15 very angry, resentful players. So it's either it's sort of all or nothing yeah, up and down the entire raid. I completely Everyone agree. Everyone has yeah. to be in sync. Yeah, I completely Absolutely. agree. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's how I feel about that. And, and there's a lot that we've seen with classic uh, in the last few months that uh, I, I think it, classic's been a lot easier for a lot of people who or sorry, easier than expected for a lot of people. Uh, oh, uh, who, who maybe played private servers or uh, even played retail vanilla. And there's there's a number of reasons for that. And uh, we can talk about that a little bit. I guess this is the place to talk about it. But um, I, I think kind of going with the 1.12 version of everything, including the lack of a progressive itemization, which and this is stuff that we, we talked about this before launch. And I, I don't necessarily want to beat a dead horse, but at the same time, it's been so long since we talked about it. Uh, I, I think it's a good time to kind of bring up some of that stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah. So specifically with the progressive itemization, it's had two adverse consequences. I think the first one you mentioned is difficulty, and um, you know there's a lot of there's a lot of different factors as to why classic content is easy right now for a lot of people. Obviously, one twelve talents, one twelve itemization, fifteen year old content. We know how to do it now. No lag, better internet, all that stuff. But I think the way progressive itemization has hurt the game the most, or the lack thereof, has hurt the game the most is what happens right now in classic while you're leveling up there's this really satisfying sense of progression Mm -hmm. where you're let's say you're level 10 you get to level 11 talent point you know new ability new crit chance new whatever and slowly each level you get a little bit more stats a little bit more gear you get access to that next tier of armor you go from male to plate or you go from leather to male you get your epic mount you just you're constantly growing over the course of leveling then when you hit level 60, you know, you hope that the game can continue with that sense of progression through gear and end game. And that's how it was back in original vanilla. You would get yeah. some gear, then Dire Maul would come out, you'd get mm-hmm. some extra gear, supplemental gear, then you know, you know, molten core items would update or loot tables would be added or changed. You get quick strike ring, which wasn't there originally, stuff like that. And there was that constant linear graph that goes upwards, your power slowly goes up. Mm-hmm. Right, right now with Classic WoW because it's one twelve, no progressive itemization. You hit level sixty, you got a bunch of really good items, and now you're just waiting. Yes, 
and some classes are waiting a lot more than others mm -hmm. um but you're just stuck there like if you're a warrior and you got bone reaver's edge week one what was the, that guy in your guild stacy what was his name tipo yeah he quit by the way he got oh. world first bre and he quit <laughs> there it is dude I mean, you get the best weapon in the game till Nax because of the 112 form, the 112 atomization. Mm -hmm. So you're just stuck there and you no longer feel like you're growing. And I think a lot of people would say that one of the biggest, most important components of any RPG is that sense of growth, that sense of character development. And I think that's what, you know, no progressive atomization has hurt the game a lot in that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, and, and I've talked about this a lot too, like for the last couple of years, actually. But uh, this, this is a big point of emphasis that private servers had, and, and this is what, uh, I say private servers, this is when Nostalrius came out and, and set the new standard for what private servers were. They came out and said, okay, we want to make an accurate to vanilla representation of classic, right? Uh, and they said, okay, you can't have everything perfect. What makes the most sense? 1.12 talents, 1.12 class balance, all that's reasonable. But other than that, they had eight debuffs at the slot instead of 16, which is kind of a push. I, I think with Classic, it's hard to say. It, would, it certainly like makes things easier, but as far as that thing on its own, how big of an impact it has, it's kind of whatever. But something like progressive itemization, where you have the 1.12 version of all the gear, items, big ticket items, that if you didn't play back in the day, or maybe if you didn't play on, on some of these private servers, you might not know about, is stuff like... Onslaught Girdle didn't exist whenever the game came out. Stuff like Savage Gladiator Chain was a tanking chess piece whenever the game came out. There's all kinds of items, all kinds of gear, and all kinds of, uh, or a whole level of like power progression that was skipped. Like, you casters at the beginning, you guys remember how mages were, like, that was probably the most, I don't know what the numbers were, but I remember somebody did like a, they looked at a census thing using like Warcraft logs or whatever. The amount of mages in raids in the first few weeks of Classic just absolutely blew everything else out of the water because mages were leveling yeah. so quickly because of all the mage gear, all the spell power gear and all the stuff that was there that you could attain while leveling. So mages were already fast well, and were already good. But here, on top of here's that, the thing with mages, like mages performed very, very well without gear. They're the best class without gear. And so if you're going for early molten cores, mm -hmm. One, they level fast. Two, they 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 bomb, they pump without any gear. Mm -hmm. And so now that we're five months, six months in, everyone has gear, all the gear you could ever want, pretty much. It's 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 everyone. It's warriors. Everyone's gonna be warriors. It's right, amazing. At this point, yeah. I mean, you have you have speedrun guilds that bring zero, one, or two, probably zero mages to their to their run, and mages aren't even in the picture anymore. Right. So it was like this weird flip because you had that stuff early. So on top of having a high base, on top of having a high base, they also had like extra gear that they wouldn't have. And then it just, it, it like totally flipped on its head. And there's a few things, like there's there's a bug with Fury Warriors that is an accurate to patch 1.12 bug where if you queue up a heroic strike, it calculates all your swings with a, like, like as if it were a yellow swing for hits. So warriors end up only needing 6% hit if they're a human, if you're like a human warrior using swords or maces, you only need 6% hit and you swing queue up your heroic strike, and right before you swing again, because it's on next swing, you, you don't heroic strike. So that way you're not doing the, the extra threat from heroic strike damage, you're not using the rage, but you're getting the, the benefit of going with your special hit rating. So, yeah, so I mean, here's the thing it's about like snowballing out of control. in okay. classic WoW. Yeah. Like, it's, it, it, this is my opinion. Mm -hmm. It's it's kind of dead to talk about. They're not going to do it. We're six months in. They're not going to do it. Classic WoW is kind of in stasis. They're, they're putting right. out content whenever they have to, but they're, it's low investment for them at this point. They're not going to do it. It's not even worth, like, it's just not going to happen. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll tell you, there is a silver lining, though, okay? As we progress through Classic WoW, we get closer. We're, we're playing with Next Ramus itemization. We're playing with 112 itemization. As we progress through Classic WoW, the Blackwing Layer, then ZG, then AQ, then X, the effect that we feel of not having progressive itemization mm -hmm. is going to be less and less every phase because we're going to be working towards the phase that we should be at with our with our current itemization. So during right. Molten Core, it felt really wonky. It felt like everything was too strong and it right. should have trivialized the content. Black and Layer, it's going to be a little bit less. AQ40, and then ZG, or uh, and then in the next, we're hardly going to even notice the lack of progressive itemization because we're going to be where we where we should have been from day one with itemization levels. Right. So I, I agree with this, and this is my initial point too. But my concern, and this is my problem, is there's a compounding effect of because everything is so easy early on and because so much gear is in the game early on that's not in the game later on, 
or sorry, sorry, that's, that's supposed to be added to the game later on. For example, like an on, I used an onslaught girdle as an example earlier. That's added in a month before BWL in retail vanilla. It's added in a month before BWL on private servers. So now, in a situation where your guild would be lucky to have like one onslaught girdle before BWL, now you have a ton of them. Like I, I know Crusade, like our guild, we have like twenty onslaught girdles. Here's the thing: this so, this goes for everything in Molten Core though, because no one killed Ragnaros until a month before BWL and Vanilla anyway. So any sort right. of BREs, any of this stuff, very few people even had this back in the day. You know what I mean? Right. But I think like, I, I think having that stuff available now, like let's compare it to private servers, right? I think a lot of the, the back in the day stuff is um, like, it's good, but comparing it to like our experience on like, let's say Elysium, Lightbringer, Northdale, whatever, uh, Nost, any of that, looking at it to where how fun that was going into it without that much gear. And then also, here's another issue that we had with MC is because all that stuff was available now, there was like, there was no, during that six month period waiting for BWL, we didn't have the, uh, we didn't have the carrot on a stick that was added in halfway through MC or, or later on in MC to where it kind of like rejuvenated MC and you're excited to go to MC again. It's like, oh, all this, all this new gear is available now. So now, to that same point, and I think this is probably what Blizzard thought, is like, well, is MC going to be boring if none of that gear is available from the beginning? And it's like, well, it wouldn't have been that big of a deal if it took longer to clear it. So doing the 1.12 version of MC in what should be patch 1.2 ended up making everything like way easier and then everybody cleared it and all that. So at this point, I, I, I do agree with what you're saying. I like there's, They're not going to do progressive optimization. It's too late. Like The game launched and, and you can't do anything about it now. But what you can do is you can do other stuff in order to counteract the effects of everything that you have now, and I think that's buffing BWL, which again is probably something they're not going to do because it feels like. Um, but Blizzard hasn't really been very proactive with stuff. I feel like the communication yeah. before Classic launch was really good. We had yeah. incredible communication, but then really since Classic launched, it's kind of been like okay, like there's these problems, what's happening, and then it takes them like a month to fix it. Whether it's the stuff with the AV, or, uh, the the AV ranking meta, which was horrible where people would just go cross server discords and queue up and, and we had all kinds of problems there. Uh, and they changed it to where they, they nerfed AV a little bit to the extent where people are queuing more Warsong now, which is great. Um, but it took them so long to do it, right? Think about how many people quit the game or quit ranking or just like so lost when, interest during that time. I just got to pause. When you say buff BWL, how do you think, uh, like, what do you think they should do? Well, I think- What does that mean? So, so calling back on your point earlier, where like what you're essentially saying is like BWL came out in patch 1.6. So if BWL comes out in patch 1.6 and we're playing on patch 1.12, there's inevitably less stuff from patch 1.1 to patch 1, or sorry, patch 1.6 to 1.12 than there is to patch 1.1 to 1.12. So there's less opportunities for stuff to have changed just by the number of patches. So I don't know the specifics off the top of my head. I'd really have to go through and research and, and do this kind of stuff to see what all was changed in BWL uh, from launch to the end of vanilla MC like there's you know, we, we have some stuff documented like how how rag worked and stuff like that um, Certain fights just being easier uh, Than they were on on private for example where they tried to do as they tried to do At least this was my understanding from from whenever I talked to, to one of the devs on, on a recent private server is They tried to do the hardest version of every fight that happened in vanilla so like I, I know for example in raid 3 my guild on, on private servers two years ago, like we, we, we wiped on Gar for like two or three weeks before we got past him. You know, Gar, the Gar ads did a ton of damage. Now we were AOE tanking Gar, which we didn't do until late BWL on private servers. We started AOE tanking Gar early on, like within the first like couple of months. So my concern is that if they don't do something, and it doesn't mean like changing mechanics, but everybody is gonna do so much damage if you played back in retail vanilla, and, and we even saw this a little bit on private servers, Veil was a big wall that people had to get through because it was such a big gear check. People had trouble getting past Veil because they just didn't do enough damage. It's a DPS race from start to bottom. Um, I'm concerned that a fight like Veil or anything with that sort of idea is just going to be lost because everybody's going to have so much gear. I think so, I, I definitely agree with that. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys uh, watched Star Wars The Last Jedi or what was not Last Jedi what was the most recent one Rise of Skywalker just the whole the whole uh, yeah, I, I didn't see it but I but I have an idea uh, go ahead go ahead so 
here's how it feels like right now. I could totally be off, but this is kind of like my my personal feeling with classic. I feel like the content is obviously very easy. And I think a lot of us in our heart of hearts knew it was going to be easy, even though we did it on private servers. We had some inklings that, you know, some things on private servers were buffed. But we also had some hope that maybe private servers got it wrong and maybe it would be a little bit more challenging or at least preserve some level of challenge. Mm -hmm. The fact that it's been so easy, it, it, almost, it almost kind of tarnishes the memory or the legacy or the, like, mythology behind those original raids like mm -hmm. original ragnaros i think if you ask anybody that's played classic and killed rag now if they feel like rag is this big epic fight it's like no right. it kind of the new version kind of hurt the old version mm -hmm. and when it comes to bwl coming out in a couple of days it feels like you know we're at risk of that as well and that's kind of what happened with star wars this new star Here's wars like, uh trilogy feels like I, it's got it's it's kind of tarnished the original trilogy because it's been so bad and I'm not saying classic is bad, but I, you know, like that that kind of same parallel. I gotta ask because I I genuinely don't know what is the new version of Rig. What is I as far mm -hmm. before this conversation, mm -hmm. I didn't think they changed anything throughout vanilla. What is new version versus old version? What what did they do? So what so they There's changed stuff. Really good. Yeah, good. Well, I mean, you, you can go on more if you want tips, but like they changed stuff with like how like melee damage, like physical damage versus fire damage, and. Um, like how the knockback works. Like there's like there's like little stuff. But mm -hmm. I, I just I just said rag as an example. That's that's just like one thing, right? But um they I remember at the end of vanilla, whenever I was playing original retail vanilla WoW, uh I was I was more of a casual player, I was a guild hopper, whatever. I, I kind of I, I peaked in Burning Crusade. I wasn't that great in vanilla, retail vanilla. Um so I remember pugging MC at the end of vanilla and it felt to to some extent kind of like it does now right like we went in there we, we'd be in there for a couple hours maybe two two three hours and it was not that hard people did not have that much gear it was a lot of casual players uh it was a consistent pug right so like you you kind of had the same players every week but that's how it was now at the beginning of vanilla it wasn't like that at all and it, i don't think it's as simple as saying like oh well everybody knows everything now Everybody knew everything at the end of Vanilla. Um, like, people people had that back then, right? Like, how many World First Raiders are there? There's 40, right? So at that point, and it, it's not quite as readily available or as uh, as much of it, but it's not like people didn't have the internet. We're playing the game on the internet. So at the so point... I have, I have a counter anecdote. I, and maybe I'm just the worst pug leader of all time i've pugged molten core a couple times on my alt mm -hmm. two weeks ago i led i led a pug run on my holy paladin two weeks ago mm -hmm. and we couldn't kill major domo and we stopped we never killed major domo right mm -hmm. so it it goes both ways i think right yes and i know there's like i mean i, I did a pug and, mc once and, and we had to come back a second day to do rag but how i feel is like at this point in classic to be able to do that in the first place i think mm -hmm. to be able to do that in the first place or get that far in the first place is like too much you know what I mean? Because like yeah. I, I I don't feel like I don't feel like they're they're a pug should be able to in a reasonable amount of time just grab a bunch of random people together out of trade chat and and now here's the thing this th now this this kind of idea of like getting a bunch of random people out of trade chat or whatever this goes uh, in favor of the point of like well everybody has the information now right people had all the information. Once it was all cleared, but there's that big period of time where not everything's cleared yet. That's one thing I want to. I, I didn't finish my last point, so uh, there's like two parts to that statement. I think I feel like if I were to get a pug together, I shouldn't be able to do that. But there are the intangible differences in the game now, where we're we're better gamers now. We have the Discord, we have this, we have that. Like like there there's some intangible things to it. Um, now, yeah, not being I mean, able to do I'll, major I'll domo. I'll say this real quick. Like, I think that progressive itemization is probably the the biggest thing undermining the state of classical right now. And like I said, they're not going to change it. It's too late. It just is what it is. But it, it is the biggest problem with classical. Right, wow. Right. That being said, what's impacting gameplay more than even progressive itemization is just the way people play with the game. The knowledge people are min maxing. They're optimizing their raid comps. They're optimizing their specs. They're coming. Freaking meta slaves, man. They're meta slaves. Yeah. That that's that's the that's the biggest thing that has changed the vanilla slash classic gameplay experience. Yeah, I, I think so. I, I think, uh, and and this is something that 
I, I think it's a, a kind of been the biggest surprise to me. Uh, I, I don't know if it's just because it's more public now and it was such a big deal on launch, but uh, maybe people just thought they had like more to gain, I guess, more popularity or, or whatever by just going like super min maxi and stuff like that. And that's not that's not something I like. I like I like to play the game. How I like to play it for like playing my rep paladin and like trying min max stuff like that. But uh, I think seeing how hard everybody went all the time or like people still go. I, I don't think there's like a big scene for people who are and we, we had talked about this before. Stay safe. Um, there's a big scene for people who are like super min maxi now. Like now it's like people care a lot less about it. Do you feel yeah, like I'm sorry, go ahead. Do you feel like we contributed to that in some way? Like, do you feel like our like videos and just like us talking about classic every day and going over like leveling routes and guides and talking about all that stuff? Well, <laughs> I, I think I think it chat's depends. calling us out, dude. Well, I, Part I of think, it feels like we did. Well, I, I think it depends. I think it depends on the type of content you do. Like, I've always been pretty. Uh, like, I, I know from from the point whenever I was talking about like my guild and stuff and like what kind of guild I wanted to run. Like my guild ended up being much better of a guild than I expected it to be. Like I, I was going to be more, more of a casual, like progression style of raiding guild. Um, not quite casual, but just more progression style. Like I, I didn't expect to kill BWL in week three or whatever we did. Right. I thought, uh, I didn't expect to go in on week. Uh, I think it was week two. I expected it to go in on week three. And if we're lucky, then maybe we'll clear it the first week, but I didn't expect that at all. Uh, or as I said, BWL, I meant MC. Um, but, uh, so, I, I mean, I feel the same way now. I, I, I wouldn't have expected to be able to clear BWL in week one, but we'll see what happens. Like my, my guild is just, it has a lot better players than, uh, than, than what I expected. And maybe it was just like the environment of content creation and stuff like that. And like you said, tips, like the guides and stuff like this. So I think it just depends. I think, I, I don't think, okay. So Where's there's the nothing baddies? wrong with make... No, no, here's the deal. There's nothing wrong with making content that you are personally interested in. So for me, if I'm making a leveling guide or a raid guide, how to optimize warlock specs, whatever. And then I this like I don't I don't want to like fucking weird flex or anything, but it's like, okay, we did a we did a world six Ragnaros, we leveled up fast, it was day nine, we did we got whatever, whatever, whatever. It's like, okay. What I've realized in hindsight after doing that, after engaging in that sort of classic wow gameplay, mm -hmm. what I've realized at this point in classic wow no one cares no one cares about yeah. any of that yeah. and maybe i'm just maybe my outlook has changed and i'm projecting i feel like no one gives a rat's ass who the top 10 molten core speed runs are no one cares who got whatever an ixy kill no one's I, I also kind of feel like no one's gonna care who got world first nefarian i feel like and this is something that i did in youtube videos and also it, it was it was my gameplay at the start of classic mm -hmm was trying to m find some competitive outlet in Classic WoW, and it's just not the game for it. Classic yeah, yeah, yeah. WoW is just not a game that fosters that. And so at this point, yeah, I'm I'm still prepping and practicing for BWL. I'm leading my guild. I'm still leading a guild. We're going to be a competitive rate. We're still doing that. But also at the same point, at the same time, it's like, I kind of don't care. It just, yeah. uh, it, it's just a personal thing. It just, yeah. just what what makes competitive classic about gameplay feel cool is having other people think you're cool for doing it. Yeah. And the reality is, if no can one cares. <laughs> exactly. No one cares. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, like it's and and maybe it's not no one, right? Like it's, it's speaking a little bit of hyperbole or whatever. But like it's it's certainly not. Uh, I feel like a lot of the people who cared back in like let's say let, let's again let's use private servers as an example. Um, as opposed to back in the day, because I do think private server is a more uh, relevant discussion just because it's more recent and deals with some of that stuff. Um, it's like everybody who cared played on one server, right? So they cared even more because they were all like directly competing against one another. Now you have like those same people that cared so much and they're spread out ac across all the classic servers. So it, it just kind of changes, right? So there's there's not as many people and the the environment that fosters people caring for it isn't there as much because it, there might be like one top guild or like like just a few like top uh, guilds on a yeah. server as opposed to like all yeah, being mean, in one place. So no one is obviously you know hyperbole. There is there is a community of people that are still speed running yeah. every, speed running every week. But if oh. you look at the total classic community, you know these are people engaging with YouTube videos and streams and playing the game. What do you think? Like how many how many people can here can name the top ten molten core speedrun like very guys? few if any like very few yeah like no one's really in, interested or engaged in in that 
Yeah. And I think a big reason as to why people aren't interested in the competitive side is because things have been so easy. Like people, you know, MMORPGs in general, like you said, stay safe. I feel like a lot of the reasons people play MMOs is to like compete with like, you know, a server, compete with like a large group of people and like weigh themselves against large group of people. When that group of people stops valuing something, stops valuing like the achievement of something, then there's no reason to do it anymore. Like why even play an MMO anymore? Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's what it is because raids have been so easy, such a face roll, because even leveling to a certain extent became a face roll over time with like the dungeon meta. People don't care as much because it's like, oh, you got world first Ragnaros or server first Blackwing Lyra. Congratulations on your crowning achievement. You know, yeah. you have... You happen to be on a server where nobody killed you when you had world buffs, and you happen to be able to get through it really fast because you PTR'd a little bit for like you know a couple of days. Like it, it's same with like uh, the ranking system right now. It's like oh you got rank fourteen, congratulations! You happen to be in a circumstance where you could play twenty hours a day and had no other obligations well, in your life it, it's, where you it, could do that. It, there's another level to that. There are people on yeah. Ferlina that the brackets were very competitive on Ferlina. People transferred mm -hmm. off Ferlina to dead servers yeah, to go yeah. get a free ride to rank 14. It's like, okay, exactly. well, that's super competitive. And then <laughs> another thing undermining any sort of like PVE classic mm -hmm. co 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 competitiveness, competition, you can PTR. I know yeah. because I'm doing it. I'm right. My guild's yeah. doing it. Every guild that's trying to perform in Black and Lair is doing it. It's, and it, it's gonna come down to which guild is gonna PTR the most. There you go. Like, which yeah. guild is going to spend six hours a day PTRing Blackwing Lair every day for class for for Blackwing Lair? It's like that's yeah. that's a huge factor. I'm I'm telling you, if you if you are not PTRing Blackwing Lair on a private server, you're not going to have a, a a decent kill speed going into Blackwing Lair. No, in a in three. Well, it's, it's, it, it's just it's just like an experience thing, right? Like you just you get reps, you see the boss and whatnot. Now, here's the thing: I I, I wouldn't want to discredit people getting rank fourteen and whatnot, and. Like people talk about how the ranking system, and now everybody has known for years and years and years the the vanilla honor mm. system is not good, but mm. um, I I wouldn't want to discredit the, the I do of time and effort it takes because it takes it, it, it takes it takes a lot of time like uh like well, I said like, it depends on the server like the the Grobulus Alliance right now right they're playing they're playing six hours a day for bracket one six hours a day then the same guy has to play 20 hours on ferlina it's kind of like titan forge the well, same reason why people hate titan forging because some people will do minimum amount of effort and get the maximum reward then other people have to put all this effort in and they don't get a comparable reward and it's like a misallocation of like achievement you know what i'm saying well i mean yeah there's there's always going to be the um there's going to be competition on your server right and it's going to depend mm -hmm. on not just your server but your faction on your server too so mm -hmm. managing brackets and stuff like this is important, but something that happened in Classic that did change how this works normally is AV was such good honor farm and Warsong was bad and you had cross realm BGs, which ended up being something that we, we talked about this and we, we went back and forth on this before launch. And it, just, it was kind of like, is it bad? Is it good? Is it? And it, I, I basically, we said it was going to be like an unfortunate reality of the situation. Like, there's going to be cross battlegrounds. Uh, yeah. But what would happen is, whenever we had, at least on the alliance side, we would have cross realm discords of people getting in voice, everybody queue at the same time, and pretty much anybody. Like, if you got into one of these discords, like you didn't have to be in a set pre made. There was there was very little. Um, well, which what's the word I'm looking for? It's like on a personal level, you didn't have that sort of. Um, I, I can't. I don't. I don't know what's the word I'm looking for. Um, it's almost like like it's almost like you have a, like a responsibility to to follow the brackets with other people and to do things the right way because WoW is a very social game. Like that's one of the big things. Uh, yeah, accountability. Thank you. Thank you, Houston Supers. Oh. Yeah, it's like you have the accountability of following the brackets. and Well, uh, check this out. Together, there, right? There's something going on for the last couple of weeks you might not even heard about. There are people that are managing very high-performance uh, alliance ranking Discord premates, mm -hmm. uh, the, the Discords for Ultra Value Premates. They're selling invites. It's $25 to join one of these Discords. It's like, okay, <laughs> so if you're not if you're not going to buy into <laughs> this, this, you're not going to rank. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Super competitive. Yeah, yeah. See, like, it's just like... It's dumb, right? Literal pay to win. So, uh, yeah, I, I didn't even know. I hadn't heard of that yet. But, uh, man, that is funny. So, uh, like, Warsong, Warsong has kind of shifted and become the meta. Uh, AV gave too much honor in Warsong. I, I, I think Warsong 
it, it seems to have like panned out pretty good. I thought it, mm. it might have even been a problem to the to where War Song might not even give enough honor. But um it seems like it's been okay so far. Um since they changed it. But uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm still on the twenty five dollars to get into the Discord. Like that's so funny to me. Well, I, I definitely agree with you that I think the current state right now is better in terms of War Song being the meta. I think that that awards players that have good pre mates. If you're a good player right now, you know you're putting time into learning the game and executing. You are being rewarded in terms of PvP because you know if you do better and you get more, more War Song Gulch victories, you're getting more honor than the next guy on your server, which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. I just what kind of bothers me or what thing that makes me sad is like why did it take so long and it goes back yes. to what you said earlier as fan with like the whole lack of communication it feels like we've had with blizzard since classic launched like before launch it was incredible we were getting updates all the time super collaborative you know you could just tell by the way they were writing their blue posts that they would read the reddits they would read their forums they would know exactly how to answer and they gave us what we would want most of the time mm -hmm. and it feels like ever since launch like blizzard has just disappeared like yeah i mean I i'm just going to do a quick comparison here i know every game is different every community is different but if you look at like osrs for example they do like weekly uh, live stream developer Q and A's or like mod Q and A's. They're all over the Reddits. They're all over their forums, constantly answering back and forth because OSRS like classic mm -hmm. was meant to be a love letter to the community. They brought back the old version of the game to mm -hmm. appease the community. Same thing with classic. And like earlier today, before this podcast, I was going back and, and reading these yeah. interviews with Jalen Brack. Jalen Brack, when he talked about classic in 2017, he was like, this is going to be a love letter to the community. We're going to be like super tight with the community. They're going to tell us, you know, how to guide the directional compass of classic and all that stuff. That was awesome. And it, it did happen before launch. But like, mm -hmm. dude, the game is live now. We're paying $15 a month, you know. So, be, yeah. yeah. I'm going to go blistered shield defense for us. They, they could do a lot better, but they... They're, they're, I'm just trying to be impartial and give credit credit to they they did respond to the Alterac Valley complaints. They released the honor system earlier than than Battlegrounds. They released Dire Mall early. There there are things they have done, but it's always been like a little bit late. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and that's that's the biggest thing. It's like um they have done some things. I, I do feel like they it feels like they wanted to put out classic and be like, okay, let's just throw that out there and then let's what can we learn from this? Okay, cool. Let's work on Shadowlands. Oh, people like some of the stuff in Classic. Well, let's let's go back on some of the pruning that we did. Like if you if you played, and I'm not gonna talk about retail too much, but uh, if if you played the Shadowlands demo at BlizzCon, um, it felt like a BFA patch. They talked about all this stuff like, oh, we're gonna add these abilities back in and this and that. It literally felt like a BFA patch, and like nothing else had been done. Like it just felt like a different. I was in a different zone, but everything else was the exact same. No new talents, no new nothing. So. I, I don't know why it, it just it just feels like they put the game out and they just wanted to leave it there. They wanted to learn some things from it, but they wanted to focus on everything else. Now, I say I don't know why. I think the reason why is even if let's say Classic has more people playing than retail, we don't know exactly. We do know based on the, the earnings calls that their subscription number shot through the roof whenever Classic came out. And I think they said that it's still over double what it was since before classic launch which would lead people to believe that there's probably more people playing classic than retail is that is that true that's what i heard yeah, um, yeah so so as of last quarter yes as of last quarter so even if that's the case let's assume that's the case they probably still make more money from retail because of this because of microtransactions 100%. the goddamn rat mounts dude what's <laughs> like, a rat man? Like, they probably make more from retail still because because people are doing name changes and race changes and this and that and all kinds of stuff right um so i don't know maybe they just want to focus on retail and i'm not saying i'm not saying they shouldn't focus on retail and i think i think anybody who's a fan of wow whether it's classic whether it's retail whether it's whatever you want wow to be good whether it's this version or that version you should want wow to be good right like people a lot of the people who want to play classic there's a lot of people who just want to play the old game again there's people who like the design of the game better all that there's a lot of people who they want to like retail. Wow, they just don't. It's not really the game for them anymore. You know, uh, I, I don't know a lot of people who are playing classic at this point who want retail. Wow, to be uh, bad. You know, for for lack of a better word. So I, I think you should want. I think you should always want Wow to be good, and, and hopefully, you know, retail is going to be good and, and all that. But I also hope 
that we're going to get Classic on the right track and that maybe we'll get a little bit of TBC here in maybe a year or so, year, year and a half, or however long it's going to be. So then let's talk about this. Like, obviously, there are issues that we've had in Classic WoW so far. The biggest one for me is probably lack of progressive ionization. I feel like we're all on the same page with that. Mm -hmm. What should they do going forward? The first thing that comes to mind for me is they should release Arathi Basin about a month or so, probably after BWL and a month before Zulgrub. That's like it should it should be staggered, sort of like Diamond was staggered outside of its yeah. proposed phase. Other than that, what do you what do you guys want to see? Um, Tips, you want to go? Um, yeah, sure. Uh, for me, it's it's not even really about the content. I think, in terms of content implementation, the most difficult part of that is behind us now. The hardest thing was going to be the launch and how they handled the honor system. From here on out, it's pretty straightforward. You've got you know BWL coming out six weeks ZG, you know, two months AQ, so on and so forth. That That's kind of easy. It doesn't impact the game that much. If there's anything that I want to see, it's I want to see Blizzard take one of these cameras and just turn it on once a week. I want to see Omar Gonzalez's big, beautiful face sitting next to him, Josh Allen. He's got the fro down to his shoulders, and they're just chilling on those little comfortable Blizzard chairs like, What's up, classic community? We're back for another developer Q&A. And they just talk to us and they hang out. It doesn't have to be formal, no pressure, anything like that. I just want to feel like Blizzard is with us. They're playing the game as well. We're all in this together. You know, maybe they talk about events. Maybe they want to host their own events, all that stuff. Just I want to feel like they're involved. To me, that would be that would mean so, the world. In other words, you're saying that the comms have been too clear. You'd like them to unclear the comms. Freaking absolutely. Okay, absolutely. Uh, way 100%. Too clear. Way too clear. They yeah. took it too literally, man. I think, no, I, I think, uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I think I think doing like developer Q&As and stuff would be good. Uh, like, like I, I'd love to, you know, hear from Omar and Brian and, and whoever else, right? We, we don't know a lot of the people on, on the classic team, but um, like you you have you have designers, right? Like any any sort of like, when, it, when you have a game, like you have, you have different parts of the team, you have engineers, you have designers, you have this and that, like there, there's people that should be working on this game. Like we want to hear from those people and be like, okay, like we're, we're kind of seeing this. And now sometimes people go and they complain about stuff and, and you could be wrong, right? Like people are like, oh, well this actually doesn't turn out that way, but that's what the designer's job is, is to go take a look at it and be like, okay, like let's try this out and see how this looks, right? Like for example, let's use the example of, of me saying maybe you need to buff BWL by adding a little bit more health, a little bit ar more armor to the bosses, maybe they do a little bit more damage or something like that. Well, what the designer would do is they would go and they would just turn turn the knobs, you know, twist all the knobs, increase this a little bit and see how it plays out with like a, a, a raid testing team or whatever. Um, so yeah, like it'd, it'd be cool to hear from these people and be like, yeah, we tried this and we thought that this wasn't a good idea or whatever. Or maybe they don't have to be so candid with it. But, um, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things where having some form of communication like we had prior to Classic launch, would be really good. Uh, now back to what Stacey was saying, like we talked about, you, you, you said AB next month after BWL, like in March, and then probably ZG right. in April. Yeah. Uh, I think I think that sounds great. Uh, probably looking at ZG like let's say let's say in the next six two weeks or so. Like that would be what end of April, or something like that. Like beginning of April. That'd be beginning of April, and then AB sometime like middle of March. I think would be good. Uh, the dragons, Emerald Dragons, will probably come out. Not too long after ZG, um, and then I would like AQ in the summer. Like if we have AQ forty in the summer, AQ forty, AQ twenty, and then that way you have a whole summer to do stuff. And and whenever you talk about the release of AQ forty, so there's there's two big. I, I talked about like the chain reaction, like the of of BWL comes out, and then there's just a bunch of content in classic now. Like AB comes out, ZG comes out, AQ twenty, AQ forty comes out. Emerald Dragons are, are here now, so now there's there's four more world bosses added into the game. The the game feels much more alive once once BWL comes out. It's just it starts the chain reaction. Um, so this is an interesting point. Okay. I think, and this is going to sound weird because I know I said the most fun part of Classic was for me the first like two weeks or so. Uh -huh. I think the best half, the best part of Classic is the second half, like Phase Four onwards is yeah, going to yeah. be so fun. Right now we're in like the it's like okay let me ask the question if if you've been not really enjoying classic you've been sort of in stasis it's whatever for you so far you tried it you kind of burned out is Blackwing Layer gonna reinvigorate the game for you probably not it's another raid it's not my favorite raid some people like it some people don't but Zolgarub, Rathi Base and yeah, AQ20 yeah. AQ40 Green Dragons Nax 
that's hype that's crazy cool okay yeah well and and that's, that's more casual like casual friendly content so like zg was yeah. added in yeah. as like a catch-up mechanic for for people who are who who like to play more casually there's two resets a week you do a weekend zg it's fun whatever uh aq20 comes out that's again it's more casual friendly content stuff that maybe new players can do in classic to be able to fill in to 40 man raids because they have some some gear that's pretty good now a, a lot of people say like I, I get this almost every day on stream hey is it too late for me to start playing classic absolutely not because what happens throughout the course of vanilla wow is stuff is added in the game that allows you to catch up one and two if you get a chance to get into a raid group if you get a chance to get into a raid group with other people who've been raiding and and they've they've done all the stuff, they've gotten a lot of the stuff. Like my my guild, the majority of my guild is stacked. So when we have a new player come in, it's usually like they almost get funneled loot because it's they end up getting geared faster than, than pretty much anybody else, any any other individual in the guild got except for maybe the main tank in the raids. So so you're saying so that's if I roll the lion says fan, I'll get Thunder Fury, I'll get Hand of Rag, Boner Brazil. You can Z, look, you can fill out an application, we can interview. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let, let me, let let me say this. Like, yeah. I know it feels like classic is kind of in a bit of a lull right now. There's not a lot going on right now. Obviously, Blackman Layer is coming out a couple days, but it's it's been kind of in a chill period. Mm -hmm. Um What was I gonna say? I totally just forgot lost my train of thought. Um we were, we were talking about. S1. We were, what, what was I gonna say? We, 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 we were talking about uh, players getting geared up really quickly whenever they were new, coming back into the game, or mm -hmm. coming into the game new. Um, but yeah, kind of just to, just like continue on with that while while you remember what you're saying. Do you remember? Nope. Okay. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't at all. I don't at all. Dude, dude, we've been playing too many games, dude. We've been playing too much. <laughs> uh, no, no. So so kind of continuing on with that. Um, I, I feel like this is something that people are scared of. Like they're not going to get any gear or they don't have any gear and they can't compete. It's like, look, like you're not, you're not going to do as much damage as somebody with more gear or you're going to have some trouble there. Sure. But as long as you can get into one of these groups, then uh, it's going to allow you, uh, or you're, you're going to have plenty of opportunity to get a bunch of stuff and start playing the game and get geared out and all that stuff. Um, I remembered. So yeah, go ahead. Listen, is BWL Zogarub like there are people that obviously have quit that haven't, haven't, kept playing you know I, like i said it was good it feels like classic has kind of been in the down period but classic was actually killing it we, f we found out from the from the report that tips is talking about it's over mm -hmm. it's over over double yeah as far as the, as far as the people as far as the amount of people playing it like there might not be as many people who yeah. played on launch yeah but there, there's there still, are, a, ton there's of still a ton of people playing right it's um, a grower not a shower mm -hmm. it's a grower not a shower now do you think that people are going to be willing if if they've burned out if they've stopped playing are people going to be willing to give Classic a second chance and get into it when when there's more stuff to do? Because right now, it's, there's, there's not been a lot to do. So, Tips, do you want to go ahead? Do you, have, you, you um, breathed? I heard you breathe, and I, and I thought you were going to talk. The grower shower thing got me all oh, okay. heavy. But no, no. For, <laughs> I, what I was going to say was, um, I, I actually, I do think, to answer your question, Stay Safe, I do think people will come back. And, you know, one of the beautiful things about Vanilla Wow design is, unlike kind of the more modern iterations of wow every patch doesn't take away content like i've heard asman say this a couple of times in retail wow today you play the patch not the expansion mm -hmm. and that's because with every single patch essentially the previous playbook gets thrown out and you have a new playbook a new raid a new system of titan forging or essence corruption or whatever it is and that's the new thing and everything else before that is pretty much uh, just irrelevant with classic, the game builds upon itself. Yeah, you're gonna still be running molten core, you know, down the line. You're still gonna be running BWL down the line. ZG, I don't care how progressed you are. You think ZG is a 20 man raid? You're still gonna run ZG for the enchants. You're gonna run it for the yes. mount, potentially the edge of madness trinkets or the blood vine if you're a caster. Mm -hmm. There's there's so many different things that even the later raids add, and the early raids still retain their relevance down the line. And it's it's just a big part of the design philosophy of classic. So if anything. The game is just getting bigger. It's expanding over time. We're in the, the most content light phase of the game right now, but mm -hmm. it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So so there's two points I want to talk about. One, one to what you said, Tips, and then one to what you said, Stay Safe. Uh, you talked about how uh, ZG, specifically ZG, and, and we'll talk about this more on, on a future Classic Cast, which we will continue. This isn't a one-off thing. We're going to come back with Classic Cast at a semi-regular in interval, okay? But uh, with ZG, again, 
It's a 20 man raid. And why I said it's so casual friendly is because you have higher gear, people who have been playing more hardcore players who they still want the ZG enchants running ZG to get those enchants, but they might not need a lot of the gear. So a lot of the gear that drops in ZG, which might not be quite as good as some of the raid gear, or maybe ranking gear or whatever else they have, can then go to the players who are maybe a little bit lower tier of gear and they can get that stuff and kind of get carried a little bit. So that to, to your point, Tips, like that's a huge, like hugely, uh, it's a good thing. It's, 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 it's massive. It's really, really good for the game. And um, yeah, I, I, that's why I like ZG so much. Now to what you said, stay safe. You were talking about... Um, you were talking about how the how the game are people are going to be willing to come back. So I'm I'm going to call on uh, our, our our buddy Nixium, right? Our buddy Nixium said this, and he made a video about this, saying there's going to be the big hype for Classic. It's going to drop, but he thinks it's going to st slowly start to raise over time. And uh, I completely agree with him. I do think it's going to slowly start to raise over time because what happens is, and and WoW in general, WoW is a very seasonal game. So whether it's retail, whether it's classic, whatever, new content comes out, people do the new content, and they dip off and they come back for, for whenever the next tier of content comes out. Classic is going to be like this too a little bit, but there's a little bit more of a, I think, consistent grind to classic where you want to keep running it every week and getting your stuff um, or, or doing the raids to get your gear and all this stuff. Uh, a little bit more so than retail. Like, I, 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 I don't know because I don't mythic raid in retail, but... Uh, Neither yeah. does anybody else. Well, yeah. Well, except some people like don't. Limit and, yeah. <laughs> except those guys. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, no, like I, I think with uh, I think with the mythic rating and stuff, there's uh, people go and they do it and they push for world first and it's it's cool. It's a cool event, all that stuff. But uh, with classic, like I feel like you have to keep running it to get your stuff because there's loots distributed across so many people. It's it's kind of harder to get stuff uh, as far as a time commitment goes. So you have this, and then it's gonna go back up. MC and BWL, you have two raids a week. And then AQ40, now you have three raids a week. But also by the time AQ40 comes out, you have ZG and AQ20 to do if you want. So now you go not only three raids for MC, BWL, and AQ40, you now have ZG and AQ20 as well. So now there's five raids for you to do. And then you have this big... I think you're going to have a the next real content drought that you're going to have in Classic is going to be between AQ40 and Nax. But what you got to remember with AQ40 launch is AQ40 launches, but it doesn't really launch because you have to do the war effort. So who knows how long that's going to be. That could be immediately for some, some servers, like for a server where you have guilds that want to go for world first or whatever, if they care about that. Uh, but for other servers, they could try and hold it. They could try and hold AQ40, and, which is what we experienced. Like, they, like all the top guilds got together and they said, no, we're going to wait and we're going to get Scareblord for a bunch of people and then, and then we're going to do AQ40 after like a month. So... Yeah, like it, it, we don't know exactly how it's going to pan out, but there's going to be a period of time after AQ40, the patch actually launches to where AQ40 actually comes out. And then you have content drought until Nax. Nax comes out and then there'll be another, it's going to dip off a little bit at that point until BC or Classic Plus, which uh, I, I think, I think they're me, probably going to go with TPC. Let me ask you this. Do you think it's possible that the only people that have stopped playing Classic are Zoomer hype gamers that wear Supreme, you know, they're vaping, they're playing, they're flossing in Fortnite, they're yeah, walking man. around in Yeezys. The only people that left, is it possible that they're only hype gamers? Is that, and then the, and then the actual, like the, hype beast kids, the actual, yeah, yeah the, hi, the hype beast I think a lot, a lot I think, I think a lot of hype beast kids left, yeah. Yeah, I th and I think there was a lot of them. Yeah, I think so too. Um, yeah. I mean, I think there was, there was probably like original vanilla players and, and non hype beast kids that were probably disappointed and, and have quit as well but i i do think yeah like you probably had the biggest majority of the people who left are probably hype beast kids right like you know you know definitely um i i, I got a question about the aq thing can, can we all like everybody here everybody watching right now can we all just agree and, and just like make a secret promise that we're not going to stockpile on uh all of the materials required for the war effort and just turn it in on day one because like like remember we were talking. Know. Remember we were talking about the whole like you know we don't want to or like we don't want to ruin the past experience and and the legacy of like class. I feel like it, just what did why no why no okay you know how you know how much it would suck if you like log in later that night after the patch drops and the event's already over and all the materials have been turned in and then you got to wait those five days or whatever before uh, or you got to wait six days for Scarab Lord or whatever and that's it. 
It's like you can't even be a part of that anymore. Good? Yeah. How is that good? Dude, oh. I wonder how that's going to go without layering. Like, layering, layering had its, mm -hmm. its own set of problems, but mm -hmm. I, I do think it was the best option of the bad options <laughs> that you have overall. Like, layering had its own Are issues. Are we going to have login teams for AQ, do you think? Yes, absolutely. I, I feel like if there's one event that's left in Classic that's going to bring My everybody God. back regardless, it's going to be the AQ gates. Everyone's going to want to experience that. It's so fun. It's so epic. And it's got that, that legendary aura. Like, oh, the big event, the Alliance and Horde had to work together. The Scarab Lord mount. It, has, it just has so much mm -hmm. hype behind it. I think everyone's going to come back for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think it's going to be big. Oh, there's Nixium too. Nixium, yeah. what's up, dude? Um, so the... I, I kind of want to expand on this. Very, I mean, layering is like dead and gone for a while now, but I just kind of want to expand on what I said just to like talk about it fully like we talked about like dynamic respawns and uh, other uh, other options that they could have done whenever layering was kind of the final decision on what they decided to do um while you have layering that kind of fixes the problem that kind of matches the problem that dynamic respawns fix of like having the same amount of mobs for the amount of people on the server uh or, or like a relative number to how many people are on the server but one thing that dynamic respawns didn't do is kind of address like the there's like an n squared like population issue, right? Where you, you end up having more and more people and then you're, you're going to have a big problem with server load with dynamic response. So that, that's why I think that, unfortunately, like while layering had its, its problems, it probably was the best of the bad options. Not a good option, but I think all the options were bad, right? So um, I almost forgot it happened. Like, yeah, I mean, honestly, it's been it's been yeah. so long. I, I just kind of wanted to. Yeah. It, it's been so long since we've done a classic cast, right? So I just kind of wanted to give my general yeah. general opinion on that. Just to layering, and we all knew this was gonna. It's easy to forget. Layering did a lot of damage. Layering did a ton of damage. I know people that have 700, 800 black lotus. They layer hopped. Yep. All day, and mm -hmm. they have they, they. There are people that seriously because of layering, they have enough gold to last them through classic vanilla. Mm -hmm. The gold's gonna last them through classic TBC. It'll last them through classic wrath. Like these people never have to farm gold ever again. They're done. Yeah. Well, dude, the the amount of inflation too that we've seen on the servers. Like I, I'm seeing like, it's funny. It feels like there should be more stuff, right? But arcane crystals, and black lotus are way more expensive than I've ever seen before. Um, flasks are super because of that. Like flasks are super expensive. Like any sort of craft is really expensive. Like fees are really high. It's kind of wild because even though like you, you feel like if you were able to abuse layering to where um, abuse is like people play the game right like they, they take advantage of it whatever so they they take advantage of layering the best they can to get the most items they could there's going to be more stuff in the economy and stuff's going to be cheaper right supply and demand but for some reason there's allegedly more stuff in there but the costs are also higher so it's kind of weird um and i i think it's it's probably just because yeah somebody said it they're holding matt's hostage yeah like it's it's almost like they're taking everything and stockpiling yeah. it and then they're just kind of this, this is trickling it in I, I was gonna say it's an interesting discussion like i've seen recently on forums and on youtube comments people suggesting as of as of late i think it's because they're prepping for bwl saying that blizzard should increase black lotus spawns because there's obviously way more people on the server right now than there were in mm -hmm. vanilla and you have people that stockpiled hundreds of lotus during the layering phase and so blizzard please i, I don't necessarily feel this way but that blizzard should increase black lotus spawn to accommodate current player load and sort of sort of uh you know help mitigate the effect of layering and, and total economic control that people have as a result of layering. Yeah, I, I think that probably would not be... I haven't thought about it too much, but I have thought about it a little bit. I think it probably wouldn't be a bad idea. And they've touched... Re, they have touched, like, spawn rates and stuff like that before because we saw that how they did that with Devil Sword Leather, right? They did do that with uh, the, the Devil Sword spawns in uh, early... Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know if you guys know this. Like, in... Blizzard just made a change and they never announced it. It was actually a very substantial change. This actually is the reason why Devil's from Mafia is pretty much got destroyed very early on. So you had, what was it? Devil Sores that were on, I think it was 15 minute spawn timers or something. Blizzard just overnight one day, it was a fix. It, it wasn't a fix. It was just unannounced change. They made the spawn timers like six minutes or something. Just one day we logged in, boom, spawn timers yeah. for Devil Sores, six minutes. It was like 15 minutes before that. So they... And they did it just to just to mess with the mafia and, and economic control. So it's not like yeah. Blizzard hasn't done this before. And they never even announced it. They never talked about it. They just did it. Yeah, and, and I think like shadow government, man. Well, <laughs> I think I think something like that. If uh, those dinos, man, the male dinos, I've been seeing them commune together. Yeah, and yeah, dude. 
unsavory it, ways. Yeah, it's been bad. It's Sorry. been bad. But yeah. uh, I, I think the I think if they were to do something about like lotus spawns, uh, veins, arcane crystal, that kind of stuff, uh, to to make up for people who took advantage of layering early on and then now having very low respawn rates. Because I guess I, I guess we can we can delve into this a little bit more, right? Talking about like supply and demand. There was really high supply early on, and then everybody stockpiled it, and now they're waiting. And now there's really low, low, there's really low supply out in the world, but the demand is really high because now people are getting ready for BWL and whatnot. Um, so yeah, to to kind of help counteract that and to to help basically the monopoly that's forming with uh, people who who took advantage of layering early on, I think uh, I don't know. I, I think it could be something that's good, but I haven't really uh, I haven't really thought about it too much. Just a little bit, so. Uh, I, I do like the idea that flasks are like super ultra rare right now because it's kind of an indirect buff to this nerfed content in the sense that I, I don't think you can reasonably expect like a semi hardcore guild or like a progression guild. It's very difficult to reasonably expect everyone in that kind of guild to have a flask, for example, uh, mm -hmm. just because it's so rare, it's so expensive. So in some in some sense, I think okay, that's pretty cool. It makes the game you know indirectly a little bit more difficult, but. I do, I do get the concerns for sure. Well, I, I, I agree with what you're saying, but I think it also kind of takes away from um, having different types of gameplay available, right? Mm. I think if people want to speed run and min max and push everything, just push it to the limit, I think you should be able to do that. I don't think you shouldn't be able to do that, um, but I. Like I, I just think like the more the more ways that you have for people to play your game, for different types of players to play your game, the mm. better, right? Which is why it, yeah. a, a lot of people wanted classic. They felt like it it was to some extent casual friendly, um, you know, because people could go and and they could do lower tiers of content. And like for example, ZG, we we've talked about all this stuff, so I won't go into it. But yeah, I I just think it's good to have different types of players be able to play the game. Another world objective would be nice. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, let's talk about BWL a little bit before, uh, before we run out of time. I, I want to, I want to go in on BWL. BWL is, is coming out, uh, on Wednesday. We started a little bit and then we, we backed off and, uh, look, when it's the first episode you've done in six months, like we're going to be a little bit over all over the place, kind of recapping things that have, uh, have happened over the last few months and also airing our grievances. So I, I kind of expect this to happen to some extent. Um, but looking forward, BWL. Stay safe. You already said that you're not the biggest fan of BWL. That's just for you in general. Um, just, just in general, you're not the biggest fan. Uh, tips for you. What are you most excited about uh, as far as BWL goes? I just want to go on the record. BWL is my favorite raid in Classic. I've never done Max, so I can't speak to that, but it's personally mm -hmm. my favorite. Um, I think there's a lot of really cool stuff there. Uh, I'm personally raid leading the Clear Comms Pug this Wednesday. Full Pug. 100%, we're going to go into BWL, we're going to destroy it, Razor Gore, he's going to drop the Untamed Blade, Veil, first attempt, easy clap, we're going to one-shot Nefarian, it's going to be the greatest thing you've ever seen. Um, yeah, I, I've been pugging the past like two months in Classic, and I've absolutely loved it, and yeah, I'm very, very excited for, for BWL, it should yeah. be fun. In a weird way, like one of the most fun raids that I've had yet is, is uh, outside of the beginning, Classic launch, was whenever we pugged that one week. Um, it was like, it was holiday week. So we were like, okay, well we, we have like a partial group. I'll just take them and then we'll, we'll fill it in with like half pug or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. and it, it is, it is fun just because it's like, it's a little bit more difficult and it's just like the randomness is, is just kind of funny. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll all be doing BWL. We'll all be doing BWL on Wednesday. So it'll, it'll be fun to, uh, yeah. see how that goes. Stay safe. You're like, you're guilty. You, you guys want to try and push for server first, right? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you on Fairly, you know, the server first uh, competition, it's very competitive. We had a guild transfer over. There's mm. two guilds on Horde that are going for it. There's two guilds, three guilds on Alliance. There's five or six guilds that are, they're all practicing. They're all coming full flasks. They're all doing full world buffs. They're all PTRing. Uh, it's a real deal. It's a real deal. Yeah. Yeah. For, for me and my guild, we want to have fun. We want to go in there. We want to have a good time. Uh, a little bit more, uh. I, I mean, just just that's, that's just kind of how I like to play the game is is I, I like to play the game where it's more um, it doesn't have to be super min maxi for it to be fun for me. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be a good time for sure. 
I like what I like. I'll, about I'll tell you this. I want to add real quick. Mm -hmm. The most I, I, I think my best raid stream ever has been a pug. I think pug stream mm -hmm. content is 50,000 times more entertaining and more fun than hearing a bunch of nerds complain about their parses during a raid and stress out over losing world buffs. Like, it's just not a fun environment. It's not a fun stream. Exactly. Pugging is way more fun to stream. If you watch a guild run, you know the outcome. You already know the end of the movie. You know what's going to happen. They're going to clear it, loot, whatever. When you watch a pug, you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. The most exciting pug I ever watched, uh, this was last year, I think, sometime. A guild called Dogs uh, in Blackwing Lair, as fate would have it. They spent, I want to say, three or four hours wiping on Razor Gore. And it was probably the most entertaining stream content I've ever seen. Now, since then, Dogs has become a great guild. They're on Feralina. I think they're the number one or number two speed clear guild on, on Horde side for Feralina. But uh, yeah, I, stuff like that, like I've, after the first couple of weeks of classic the competitive stuff, like I kind of got over that. That kind of stuff is fun to me now, so I'm excited for it. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know because I haven't been following with the logs and stuff, but I'll mm -hmm. say with with my guild, same thing. Like on raid three on on private, it was I think what made those streams part of what made those streams so good is like we we had like people become like let's say you have a guild. There, there's different parts to this, right? Like let's say you have like a mm -hmm. guild raid, um, and and this isn't just uh I I don't want to go too much on like stream type stuff right now, but uh, I think like having like those consistent members of the raid that people are used to hearing like. Like deputy, like everybody, like the deputy memes were were a thing. Like people were talking about Morocco and all these guys, which which are actually both still still in my guild now. But uh, people people knew these guys. Like we had Black Panty as our tank. Like people would say, like Black Panty would tell me he would get messages from people all the time. He's like, dude, people whisper me and be like, oh, dude, I love you on S Fan Stream, and it's cool watching you guys and this and that. So so having that consistency there is kind of cool too. But I think what made the Raid Three stream so good was the the guild wasn't particularly good like i know we had a uh we had a situation where we were very similar like we wiped on razor gore we, we went in with like 20 people like tw and that, it was like 29 people i think was our number because it was like a holiday week or so i don't remember for some reason we had a bunch of people dodge week one of bwo so we tried to go into bwo with like 29 people and we couldn't get pugs because everybody wanted to run with their own guild so we tried to do razor gore and it was just a complete mess so it was very similar to us too um having having a guild that like wasn't super great i think was uh it, it ended up making it like a lot funnier and a lot better for stream but uh kind of moving on from that i i think that bwl is i just like the art i like the vibe i like the dragons i like the whole like draconic like everything looks cool to me like i i like that a lot you know um i like that a whole lot so yeah yeah it's cool. It's a big change of pace. Like the mm -hmm. jump from Molten Gore to BWL. I know we've been talking about how simple the raids have been and stuff like that. But if you've never played vanilla before, never played classic before, the jump from Molten Gore to BWL is pretty significant, relatively speaking. Like uh, even the first boss, Razor Gore, it's like a three, three and a half minute encounter. Mm -hmm. That's already the length of Ragnaros for for most guilds. If not, you know, it's it's right in that ballpark. And things only get harder. I think a lot of guilds are not going to clear BWL week one in terms of like just the general population who's never really raided vanilla before uh, because Veil of Straws despawns after one hour from first pull. So if you don't kill Veil within an hour, you're done for BWL for that week. And there's mm -hmm. going to be a lot of people that are going to struggle on Veil, I think. Now, obviously, you're going to have the apes and, and the progresses and those top end guilds just come in and clear it in 20 minutes. Not 20, but clear it really fast and, and stay by. But uh, I think the overall general population of Classic, the average guild in Classic, I think I'd be in for a little bit of a rude awakening. I got to ask, because I don't know, is that how Vale operated in 112? Because we had speculated the same about Ragnaros, how he would despawn after two hours in 112, and I've never heard of a Ragnaros dis... No, he does. No, he, 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 he does. He, he does, does, and then you he can does. go come Major Domo again. That's right. Okay. Okay, yeah. He does. Yeah. But but I no, I think there's a I think there's a respawn timer on Domo, like a long respawn timer it's on a Domo. Six, yeah, I think it's six, yeah, there is. Six there or eight is. hours. Yeah, yeah, something like that. There is. Um okay, Veil, one hour. Okay. It's a long I don't I don't know exactly what the timer is on Domo, but I know it's long. Um but yeah. No, I, I, I do like uh I like how BWL progresses too. Like just the whole raid just feels good to me. Like I I know uh like again, tips. Like I, I, I know you said you're not, you're not a big, or not tips. Stay safe. I know you said you're not a big fan, but just like the layout, 
you go in, you have a boss right away, and then you have another boss, and then you have a little bit of trash. I like the suppression room. The suppression room is fun. I have heard a lot of people it's the depression room, but I, I, I like suppression room a lot. I just... It's because it's the coordination is fun to me. Like the people communicate. Okay, I'm pulling. Okay, wait. Everybody wait in this cubby. Do this. Go get that trap. This and that. Mm -hmm. So. Back in the private server days, I used to, we would get to suppression room. I'd put a mage on follow. I'd go AFK, take the dog for a walk, come back in. All right, Broodlord time. Easy. <laughs> AFK the entire mm -hmm. thing. I will say that uh, BWL has some amazing loot. I think like in terms of like design and actual like effects, yeah. you've got the life giving gems, you know, for warriors, you've got all the, the class specific trinkets, you've got ass candy, you've got, you know, tier two sets, warlock tier two set, full tier two set looks amazing. Um, Paladin tier two full judgment looks amazing. Like you've got some really cool gear. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, I think the gear looks cool. So, so the gear originally, in case you didn't know, uh, Anybody who might be watching it and know the gear originally looked like really bad and then they reworked all the gear in 1.9 They updated tier 2 a lot for a lot of classes. I think mages had like four reworks or something on their tier 2 Paladins had like two or three um, But yeah, the, they changed everything in 1.9 I think that was the final update for all the gear and they made it look way cool It used to look terrible. It used to look like a green set for some of the classes now the rogue gear was like a red version of Shadowcraft, which is pretty cool, but like the cool sets that you see now weren't in the game the whole time. They were they were added in uh, for like the second half of classic whenever AQ patch dropped. So, yeah, I, I like I like the I just like everything like the the design all that stuff. But um, is there anything that you guys want to add or talk about before we go on into uh, before we go on into Q and A? We should do Q and A because I've got to go in twelve minutes. Let's answer yeah. some questions. Yeah, mm. let's do that. Um, so guys, uh, anybody in chat who's interested, if you guys have any questions or whatever, uh, if there's anything you guys want to talk about, um, then I've seen, question. I've seen this guy spamming this in chat the entire okay. time. And okay. I think it's a good question okay. at as fun tips at stay TV. Have you guys done worse on Gulch as a non pre-made? It's awful. Mm. You almost always queue up against a pre-made and get graveyard camped. It's all, it's all truck Valley all over again. So here's the thing. Just get a pre-made. Like, uh, there, there's a guy, uh, he's actually in my guild. He gets bracket two every week, and he pugs premans out of trade chat. He pugs them out of trade chat every week. He gets bracket two. He's getting, what, like 800, 900k on her a week. Just just make a, you got to have the initiative. Make a premade. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think, um, I, I do think that's the solution to the problem. But, yeah, I, I think ever since they changed the meta and you have more people doing, uh, Ever since they changed the meta and you have more people doing what's it called, uh, doing doing war song instead of AV, you you're just naturally going to have more pre mids. And yeah, sometimes like they'll just go and at, at that they'll, they'll go and they'll, the the idea is is you want to have people go flag running like a mage and a druid or whatever, and then the rest of the team goes and like farms graveyard or whatever. The best thing you can hope for in that case, if if it's like a good pre made, uh, try and farm some kills or whatever. They did change how honor works to where it's ten percent decay instead of twenty five percent decay. Um, and yeah, that kind of sucks. So, but but that's that's just kind of how the game is, and that's one of the that's just one of the things about vanilla. Uh, I don't know a better solution than that. Um, what are the chances they buff Blackwing Lair to make it harder? Zero, zero, zero. percent chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't I don't think they're gonna buff it at this point. Like I would have liked them to, but I I, I don't think they're going to do it. Uh, that that's what kind of worries me. But we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully BWL is still difficult. That's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping PWL is still like uh, at least has a level of difficulty to where it's not like MC. It doesn't have to be super hard, right? But I, I don't think it should be like how MC was. I think MC was way too easy. And uh, unfortunately, I, I don't know. I could really have to go through and look it up and like see what's documented on like how how each individual fight changed or if they they tweak this here, they 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 buff this, they nerf that on the different fights. Um, but again, to your point, stay safe earlier. The there's less opportunity for change from 1.6 to 1.12, uh, as there was from 1.1 to 1.12 uh, for MC. So, yeah, I mean, hopefully it's not that bad. Hopefully it's hopefully it's uh, hopefully it's more more difficult than that. So, yeah, we got somebody uh, calling us out in the chat here. His name is McConnell Rhett. Mc McConnell Rhett. It's, it's McComer. It's McComer. McComer. There it is. Mm -hmm. uh, my question is, when can we start asking Blizz for changes to the game? Rhett and Boomkin and Enhancement need heavy buffs, and the game sucks. Um, 
Yeah. So, so when can we lobby to fix it? And then he follows that up and he says, you see guys, they won't answer it because they're against changes. Well, if you want changes, McConnell, let's start number one with your streaming schedule. Okay. Why don't we change your streaming schedule first and foremost, so we can actually enjoy you on stream. Um, but, uh, yeah, no changes. No changes. Guys, so, the no so, changes versus changes thing is over. It's been over since launch. Blizzard's already changed a thousand it's, things. It's way different. Yeah, they changed it. Yeah. It's, it's, classic launch was yeah. way different than vanilla. And, and I think a lot, not a lot of people know that, right? And it, it, mm -hmm. it might start with itemization, but think about all the other things and all the like adverse effects, like like we talked yeah. about layering and this and that. Uh, at, at this point, like you just have to make sure, like make it good, right? You don't have to go buff classes and stuff like that. Okay, hold on. You don't need to buff classes, but... To McConnell's point, I do think Paladins should probably get, like, Crusader Strike, Divine Storm, Seal of Blood for everybody, and uh, maybe just go ahead and give them a silence. Other than that, I think it's fine. Like, you don't really need to change <laughs> You don't need to change anything. So, uh, I, I don't, for real though, I, I don't think you need to change, like, class balance or buff or anything like that. Um, but just make sure the game is good. So, that's that's it. Guys, don't worry about changes. August 28th, 2021, you'll be playing Classic TBC, okay? Leaks, I know. August 28, 2021, you'll have all the changes you want, okay? I don't I don't think I don't think they would you think Burning Crusade would come out Oh wait, actually 2021. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think by then we could see Burning Crusade. I think by then. I, I would like to see it at the beginning of the summer. But I think that's a wait, discussion. That's, that's a year and a half from now. That's I'm sorry. Uh, a year uh, and a half from now. August 31st. August 31st, 2021. I think that's like too long. Oh hey. Twitch Rivals. Holy crap. Thank you. I, that might be a mistake, but I'm not going to complain. Thank you for the 100 gifted subs. No, uh, yeah, that's that's from... The <laughs> <laughs> Yo, uh, twitch.tv slash tipshop, baby. Twitch.tv slash tipshop. It's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's, it's from whenever we competed in Twitch Rivals. Uh, what's it called? It's from whenever we competed in Twitch Rivals uh, a few weeks ago. Twitch Rivals, thank you for the 100 gifted subs. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I really, really appreciate that. That is a lot. That, uh, oh, 104. Wow. Yeah, 104 gifted subs. There you go. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, so kind of back to the show. Um, yeah, I, I, think, I think Burning Crusade. I would like to see Burning Crusade come out at the beginning of the summer instead of at the end of summer. Like they always talk about classic summer and then it was, yes, it was summer, but it was at the end. Um, so I don't know. I would like to see a classic TVC that's at the beginning of uh, uh, the beginning of the summer. You know, uh, that way more people who are, like if they have school, if they're in college or whatever, they have more free time. Right? People generally have more free time in the summer. Well, actually, I don't know. Do because I, I, I had this discussion with someone before too, where I I'm in the mindset of like people go to school and they do things during the year, and then summer is free time. But like if you're if you're if you're older and you have a family and you got kids and a wife. Or, or more more than one. I mean, I mean, who knows how many wives you might have, uh, or or a husband or whatever. Um, Not bad. You're probably going on vacation and stuff during the summer too. So I don't know. I, yeah, I think that's the mindset that I have. Is but it's the mindset of a shut in nerd, right? Because norm, like yeah, normal like exactly. normal people, they go on vacations. They're going to the beach. They're going hiking. Yeah, and they have jobs they're, anyway. Yeah. They work year round. Year round. Yeah. So jobs. Yeah. No, I think you're right. But you know what'd be really interesting. I would mm -hmm. love to see a demographic uh, a demographic spread from Blizzard on Classic. I'm really curious. Are Zoomers actually playing? Is it just old people? Is it just boomers like us? Well, Who is the, playing the best this game? we have? The best way we can tell is our YouTube analytics, right? So I can tell you, mm -hmm. mine is 100 percent. Literally, it is literally this 100 percent men between 25 and 35. That's it. Mine is that is the demographic of my YouTube channel. Mine mm -hmm. is mine is uh, mostly women, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I looked mine up. Mine is mostly women. Mm -hmm. Lots of ladies uh, watch my stream and my content. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. don't assume. Mm -hmm. I yes, I'm very popular with the ladies, guys. <clears throat> I would like to make that clear. I believe it. Thank you. Uh, anyway, <laughs> no, uh, look. So um, I think we let's take let's take a couple more let's take a couple more questions here and then we can finish up. Uh, let's see. Uh, Wait, I have a question. Okay. Tips out. When are we having an alliance for Alina dual tournament? The CDL alliance for Alina. Well, you might be very excited. 
yesterday, I may or may not have spoken to someone who may or may not have been pivotal in the planning and discussion for mm-hmm. CDL season two. Uh, CDL season two is going to be cross faction alliance and horde equal amounts, of course, hundred percent equality. And, uh, yeah, I don't want to say anything more right now, but, um, also CDL EU is coming. Uh, actually we're going to do EU first and then two weeks later is going to be CDL season two for Feralina. So I I can't reveal the details, Mm -hmm. but, um, if there are any, if there's anybody out there that would like to sponsor the CDL, um, we're working with a couple of partners right now, but Mm -hmm. we want to increase that prize pool as much as possible for the community. So if there's anybody that wants to, uh, contribute yeah no oh feel i think i think twitch Twitch rivals you're in here right yeah let's look it up i think i think blockbuster might be interested oh yeah yeah. blockbuster and circuit city um i think they're booming yeah they're they're doing really good (laughs) 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 they need they need all the advertising they can get um so yeah that's uh that's actually pretty exciting that's gonna be that's gonna be uh pretty good so we're gonna have some eu uh, EU dueling tournaments, and then uh, maybe maybe some alliance dueling tournaments on Fairly Enough. So I got a question for you guys, mm-hmm. S Fan okay. and Stay Safe. When the CDL does come to the alliance, will you be competing? I'll play. Yeah, yeah. but oh. dude, dude, I'll play. Here's 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 my thing is, it, I, and I'll, I'll we I, I I know we got to finish up here because because people got to go, but um. I think, and and we saw this a little bit on the Horde side, where we we saw this happen in people's guilds and stuff. They didn't play the game normally, and they started, I need this for the dual tournament. I need this for this. I need this for that, right? And it stopped being about like a normal like gearing situation. And that's something that that I think your your guild is going to have to handle if if you're uh, if you have people that are interested in doing this kind of stuff, you know. So that's 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 yeah. a concern. Right. So what he's saying is that Crusade and Power just need to funnel both of us all whatever gear we want. <laughs> like yeah. that's and I, I agree. I 100% agree with that. <laughs> no, I, I think uh, I, I think this is just something that that is going to have to be if you're if you're a guild leader or a raid leader or whatever that is uh, uh, managing a guild with people who are competing in this tournaments. That is going to be an added uh, an added challenge whenever it comes to doing loot council or something like that, if that's the kind of loot system that you run. So, yeah, I, I don't plan on, I don't really plan on changing anything as far as like, uh, it, it just depends, right? Like how we do our loot council is like people, they contribute, they do this, they do that. I, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to be in a situation where we're having to change things for, for the dual tournament, but I could also see like how, uh, some guilds might be interested in doing stuff like that. So I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen, but, but that's my current mindset. Um, Jump please has a very wholesome question for you, S Fan. He mm-hmm. says, "At S Fan TV, tips for someone starting classic now." If you want to start classic now, the most important thing for you to do is to log in and play, play a warrior the game. and play warrior. <laughs> so, well, I think I mean you can play whatever class you want. Uh, warriors are warriors are really strong, and they're they're good tanks. They're good in PvP. They're good in DPS, um, but at the end of the day, dude, if you want to play classic, there's so much stuff out there. There's so much information and there's, you know, we touched on this a little bit earlier, the overload of like YouTube content and this and that. And this is, this is a, to, this is something that the people do on YouTube. They, they sensationalize everything. Oh, this is the way that you have to play the game. You have to do this. The, you know, this is your only, this is the only thing that you can do. You don't, you don't have to do that. Play the game the way that you want to play it and find a community of people on the server that you're on that share the same kind of vision for the game that you have. Um, that's, uh, that, that's how I feel. I, I think that's the way that the game should be played. And uh, you'll, you'll go look at YouTube videos, watch them, enjoy them, learn something from them, but take it with a grain of salt and, and don't think that you have to play the game a certain way. Uh, that's, that's the biggest thing that I could say about anybody who's looking to start playing Classic WoW right now. The reason I say warrior, and there's a couple other classes I would say, Holy Paladin or Priest also, is that they, these are classes that are fine to play casually. And then if, if you decide you want to be in a competitive pre-made or you want to raid competitively or whatever, whatever, or you want to, like, these are classes that also are very highly desirable in more competitive environments as well. 
and you're not going to find yourself as a mage, for example. If you're a fresh mage, first time playing classic, and you decide that you know six months from now you want to play competitively, it's going to be very hard to find a competitive guild as a mage. It's going to be very hard to do. Yeah, yeah. If there's wars, warriors, it's it's very easy. Priests, it's easy. Holy paladins, it's easy. Even as a warlock, it's hard. Like for example, going forward, I'm I'm pretty much switching from my warlock to my holy paladin just because of necessity. Yeah. Yeah. And again, it depends on the type of guild that you find, right? So like if, if you're if you're in a guild like that, like I know for me in my guild, like I like to have a balanced raid comp. Like I don't like to have a min maxi raid comp because if if the raid comp is balanced, then everybody in the raid will be more likely to get geared out uh, at, a, at a better rate by having a, an even split of classes or a more even split of classes, I should say. So if there's one piece of advice I would give a brand new classic WoW player, roll on Grobulus you will absolutely love it. It's like a time capsule back to 2005. Like, there's a couple of competitive guilds, but for the most part, it's brand new players or players that are willing to help new players. Super, super fun. Shout out to the Grob mob. I know there's a server in EU that's kind of like the Grob equivalent. It's the RP PvP server, but I don't know what it is. I think I, I think it's, it's I think it's Flame Lash Alliance. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> maybe, yeah. Oh no, 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 no! That's no I was awesome. joking. I was joking. Yeah, that was the, yeah, that was the that was the server that died. Zandalar tribe. It's Zandalar yeah. tribe. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, roll on Grob if you're NA. You'll have a blast, and I'd say roll on Zandalar tribe if you're EU. You'll help. You'll probably have a good time. Yeah. So, uh, anyways, guys, I think this was a great return episode we we talked about a lot we aired some grievances we're super excited for bw on the rest of classic coming up thank you guys so much for joining us thank you tips thank you stay safe for being here we got we got the thank we you. got the crew back together it's gonna be this fun. was fun man this was really fun yeah I'm, I'm i'm excited we're we're gonna we're gonna get back to a more regular schedule doing this um so if you haven't please make sure to follow tips make sure to follow stay safe their uh their handles are on there tips out baby youtube twitter and twitch stay yeah, safe find TV. Me on twitter on uh on twitch and youtube and then for myself s fan tv on on everything as well so thank you guys so much for joining us i'm gonna keep streaming for a little bit i'm gonna take a break and go to the bathroom but uh for class cast we'll see you guys next time peace later <laughs>